In the early 1990s, we were struggling to begin to articulate a cross-cultural approach and culturally specific approaches to organizing. There was no, no training component for organizing in the Twin Cities. So we started trying to put together what the model looked like here. And one of the key things we did was talk to people who were really good organizers. And we found out that virtually all of them had some sort of mentor that knew how to train. And that's when the idea of a mentor in the Organizing Apprenticeship Project came up. And that, that to me was a big deal. That was a big aha moment. We intentionally chose the word apprentice because we wanted to change the idea of um, uh, organizing as something that you would go into a classroom and learn because we wanted to literally hold up a model where we were saying, this is how you learn organizing. You need to actually do it. And what we thought was, there's tons of talent out in the field with people who are senior organizers. So the mentoring was intentionally reaching out to recognize a very diverse group of strong mentors and organizers in, in the field. For the mentors to have apprentices work with us, we got a lot more done. We were bringing in people who had some deeper perspective about the struggles we were facing in the community than we even had. So it's a mutual learning partnership is what it really is. Using culture and using art and using deep set rage and a quest for voice to just kind of explode. This was a place where all of that happened. There were very few uh, organizations of color here in the Twin Cities that had uh, organizing commitment and organizing mission. And so we ended up having a lot of our organizers go to white organizations. We've done a pretty good job training diverse organizers, but it doesn't matter if the field will not welcome them, if they're marginalized in their jobs, if, if carrying the truth about the racial inequities in the community and in the organization falls entirely on their shoulders. And I think part of the critique from our apprentices is that OPE itself wasn't helping them navigate this difficulty. So an internal combustion occurred among OPE staff, OPE apprentices, OPE board members at that time, and it's awesome that we had enough diversity of people in those three roles that the implosion actually connected. Deeply enough that the organization didn't disappear, the organization actually said, let's slow down, bring in some wisdom, and figure this out. So. As we looked around for an organization that could do this, we came upon the Applied Research Center that did this kind of work and engaged them to help us a, not only examine ourselves, but develop a plan and a new way to focus um, our work. They had a, uh, an approach they called racial justice. At that time, a racial justice approach, and we were able to uh, you know, incorporate that framework. They helped us incorporate that framework into the plan and approach. So the transformation of OPE that occurred through that implosion is actually a really useful example of how you come out of the other side. And it's a stronger, richer organization making more of a difference. OIP grew from just a training center to a, a group that would observe and give commentary publicly on, on racial justice. One of the first things that came out of it was the uh, racial justice report card on the state legislature. The racial equity report card had a huge impact. That actually held legislators accountable for the laws that they made that impact the communities of color both positively and negatively. It was very empowering not only to us as a board but also as communities of color to have this moral document. Just by putting those words out, you created all sorts of space for a racial equity conversation in organizing and advocacy and research and in public policy. In 2014, we had 18 apprentices and we added a greater Minnesota immersion during this last class. So they went up to Leech Lake and met with some Native American leaders. We then went down to um, Owatonna where we were, we were hosted by Central Campesino. Our curriculum really encourages a multicultural, multiracial approach to building power in our communities. Our alumni, they want an ongoing sustainable space where they can come together, especially the organizers of color and immigrant and indigenous organizers. They want a space where they can come and share and be challenged uh, and, and, and support one another, where as organizers of color, we can talk about 
the opportunities and the challenges of working in a predominantly white-led uh, nonprofit field in Minnesota. For 21 years, OEP has been developing organizers and leaders and evolved into an organization dedicated to building power for racial justice in Minnesota. For the next 21 years and beyond that, we will continue to be voices for racial justice.